Good day everyone, my name is Andrew Friskup. I'm the Serial Extension Plant Pathologist at NDSU. And today I want to review some of the small grain, more or less a small grain disease update for Southeast North Dakota. I spend every year coming out to Castleton for the field day and unfortunately I won't get to meet a lot of you again in person, but I hope you can find this information that I'm going to deliver today to be helpful. To give you a general viewpoint of what I'm seeing for diseases in Southeast North Dakota, it's, it's been, it was pretty boring early on for a plant pathologist. Not a lot of disease were developing. A bigger reason why that was occurring is because we did not have those prolon dew points. Uh, some of the diseases that we found are a little bit of tan spot and our first report of leaf rust in wheat came in June 24th, which was probably what I consider a little bit later than usual and I don't expect to see too much yield ramifications because of that uh, late detection of leaf rust. Certainly it's always good to know that there's a couple different stages of wheat crops out there so scouting is still our number one friend uh, when it comes to deciding what you have to do for a later season uh, fungicide inputs. Speaking of fungicide inputs, the one thing that I really want to focus on today is when is the time to spray for fusarium head blight or scab. Research conducted at NDSU since 1993 uh, has really focused on this disease because it continues to be our number one small grain disease in the state. When we think about spraying for scab, um, I want to review what we see in barley, but also what we see in spring wheat. The best time to make an application in spring wheat is at the onset of flowering. So in other words, when you start seeing those yellow anthers start poking from the center of the head on the main stems, that is the best time to make that application. Now I know that when you look at a field, not everything is going to be at the same growth stage. So the one thing that we've been seeing more frequently in the last five to eight years is that it is better to be a little bit too late than too early. So how I digest this information is if your wheat is flowering today, just started flowering today, you have about seven days to make that application to get good dawn suppression and also protect yield. When we switch over to barley, we have a little bit different timing change. Barley doesn't flower outside of the boot stage, it flowers within the boot. So our timing is when we have full spike emergence, when it's completely away from that flag leaf is the best time to hit barley. And the same trend holds true that it is better to be too late than too early with that fungicide application in barley. Specifically what you'll see uh, in barley is once you have that full head emergence again, we're going to use today as our example, we're going to see that the peduncle is going to start elongating. Now for seven days after full head is emergence, you're probably going to see a bit little, a little bit longer peduncle, but that's still within that window to make that fungicide application. Um, both times, a timely application is one of our key things, but the other thing we got to remember is what to use. Our best fungicides on the market are the active ingredients that are in contained in Prosaro, Corumba, and Miravis Ace. All of them provide routinely about 50% suppression of disease. Uh, you also may have some Folicure products out there or Tebuconazole generics. They offer about 30% uh, uh, suppression of disease. So timing and what to use. One thing is do not use a strobularin based product because that can actually increase your vomitoxin levels at the end of the year. Uh, those are the, that's the primary head disease I want to cover for Southeast North Dakota. But the other one that I would like to focus on is bacterial leaf streak. Now with bacterial leaf streak, it's a disease that we're starting to see more common uh, in the last couple years. And by its nature, it's a bacterial disease. We don't have an in-season management solution. Uh, the best solution we have right now is to use less susceptible varieties. Bacterial leaf streak is going to be more apparent after we see severe thunderstorms or heavy wind-driven rain at flag leaf or beyond. Perfect example is this, where I'm sitting in the field right after the big rain event across most of the state. And when looking at some of the winter wheat plots, we're starting to pick up some very significant levels of bacterial leaf streak. As the name implies, you're going to see streaky, uh, uh, yellow and brown necrotic lesions up and down the, uh, up and down the plant. And the reason why we, we worry about it is when it starts hitting the flag leaves. When it starts hitting the flag leaves, we, all we can think about is photosynthetic reduction, less yield potential, and see some disease, see some pretty big yield differences. Uh, for example, last year we saw yield differences uh, as far as 50% reduction on some of the most susceptible varieties, but if you have a resistant variety, that yield reduction is minimal. Uh, that's what I have for you today as far as what we're starting to see, what we may anticipate to see in the coming weeks. And I encourage you to work with your local county agent if you have any questions for me, but you can also reach out to me directly as well. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.